Hello there. Welcome to the tooling resource overview of shop floor machining. In this video, we're going to take a moment to discuss tooling concepts when using the 3D Experience platform. We're not doing a step-by-step -step walkthrough yet because we need to cover a few things first. Number one, we're going to check on some settings in our preferences that impact how we create and use tooling. Number two, we go over what's created when we make tools in the 3D Experience platform. And then number three, we'll discuss the methods in how we create tooling because there's more than one way. Okay, so step number one. If you've ever worked in a machine shop, you know that there are a million ways to machine the same part. While process choices and tool pathing play an important role, feeds and speeds have just as much influence over the part we're making. So we're going to make sure we set ourselves up to address that by going into our preferences and setting up some cutting conditions. In your app preferences, under the simulation and machining, scroll all the way down until you see tool attachments, holder attachments, and feeds and speeds configuration. This is the feeds and speeds configuration section. This is where you can create cutting conditions based off of material type, machining type, or machining quality. If standardization in programming is one of your goals, then completing this setup is probably a good idea for you, as it allows the operation and the tools to determine the feeds and speeds, as opposed to having it keyed in manually. All right, so that covers some of the preferences we set for tooling. Let's move on to the next subject. Question number two that we ask ourselves what do we actually make when we create tooling in the 3D Experience platform? Well, let me explain. The simulation capabilities you have in the 3D Experience platform can be as accurate as you want it to be. So when we decide to make tools, they follow the same principles. Your tools can and should be as accurate and detailed as you can make them. In real life, when you put tooling together, there can be multiple components that you assemble. For example, on an HSK tool holder, you might need an adapter to hold the cutting tool. These objects should become their own individual components. They can be reused or considered interchangeable with other compatible components. And just so you know, the trigram assigned for tooling resources like these is NCT. If it can be used as part of a tool assembly, it will likely be indexed as an NCT object in the database. Well, what's the takeaway from all of this? Well, we should treat these tools like real objects. So the answer to the question, what do we actually make when we create tooling in the 3D Experience platform? We create tooling components. They can be assembled together just like the real thing. And once you have those components stored in the database as an NCT object, there's no need to recreate them. You can just reuse the object for any future sessions. Well, now that we have all these settings in place and all that knowledge we just talked about, why don't we just start building some tools then? Well, hold on a sec. We still have to talk about how we create these tools. I'll highlight three different ways that we can create tools, two of them available to anybody, and the third option only available to those with a cutting tool technologist role. So the first method to creating tools is pretty straightforward. If you're going to start with nothing, you simply click on the resource creation button and decide what kind of tool or tool assembly you want to create. If you already have tools in your database, you could also just query the individual components and assemble them together to complete that tool assembly. We'll do a walkthrough of these tool building exercises in the next video. Our second method is used when a 3D model is available to represent the tool. Quite often, you can acquire CAD data from your tooling provider. Those models can be imported into the platform for you to create a user representation. User rep tools are made by filling out the appropriate parameters and then defining the CAD representation, thus giving you a tool assembly that looks just like it came straight from the OEM. Now the last method is only available to those with a cutting tool technologist role. It's also the easiest. It's a direct import of the tool along with the associated parameters from any online tooling company. As long as you have an e-catalog URL to access, you can do what I'm doing here, which is clicking on the tool or even the complete tool assembly and importing directly from the tooling company. This is the least amount of work for the best representation of a cutting tool possible. So we just reviewed a couple of the methods. Now's your chance to decide on how you want to move forward. 
Are we going to generate a user-defined tool in the CAM system? Or maybe we'll create a tool with a user representation. Or do you have cutting tool technologists? Let's do a direct import from an e-catalog. We'll walk through examples of each in the next few episodes. So get your tool list ready, and I'll see you in the next one.